What is good, everybody? Today we got some brand new WWE and AEW action figure news for you, man. Got some new reveals to us, or got some more final product images and some different things going on, man. We're going to dive into all the news that we have, and I also have some little bits that I want to add to it, and you guys can let me know what you guys think. But today we're going to be taking a look at the newest top picks WWE Elite Wave from Mattel for 2024, as well as AEW Unrivaled Series 15 and what they finally look like. We saw what the renders look like, and we saw some on display, but we have better images of men on card images of these figures and I want to take a look at them but let's get into the top picks figures man so back at Wrestlemania 40 we actually got to see some of this wave and we did know the full wave and we actually knew about this a long time ago or a few months back because of I want to say it was Collector Insider if I'm not mistaken who always bats a thousand I'm pretty sure we did a video covering new figure reveals or new figure lineups and we discussed the lineups and who's in it and all those different things and we broke it down and I do believe this entire top picks wave was a part of that because we did get to see one of these figures. Now we're going to get into it. The first figure that we have here is going to be Solo Sokoa. Now this is, I do believe this is at Smith's and we have a look at the new top picks wave. Now this is going to be Elite 104 Solo Sokoa, but it does have the updated torso. Now we did see this back at WrestleMania, like I said, in the display case there was a solo Sokoa it was in the elite 104 gear and I remember talking to Steve and Steve did say that it would have the updated torso and that he was a part of the new top picks wave and initially when I saw the figure I figured it was top picks because they don't usually put older figures in the display case at these events usually I mean it does happen but it's not uh, it's usually all brand new so when I saw this figure in the case I figured that's got to be the new top picks wave I also saw the rock in there which we'll get into and it all makes sense now what all took place but we did see this it is elite 104 solo so if you guys want that Elite 104 Solo, but remember it had it had the really skinny torso the first go around. Remember, they did upgrade it with the Elite 107 torso. And I know this figure is not accurate now, but if you want that initial black attire fitting that era of the bloodline, fitting that era for Solo Sokoa, you can buy that. And it will be the new Elite 107 torso, which adds to it there. So you can do that if you want to. And honestly, like this may be one of the worst top picks waves ever. And I'll get into why and all those different things. But you may be able to tell. But yeah, we have a, a pretty much re-release here, but with a part change. It is a repaint of Elite 107. Seven, essentially. I don't know about the head sculpt though. It may be the Elite 107 head sculpt on there as well. I know those head sculpts were slightly different, but Solo Sokoa is the first figure in the Top Picks wave, but it is in the black and red instead of the red and black that we saw from Elite 107. Now we are getting Elite 104 with its upgrades. Now the next figure in the set is going to be Cody Rhodes. Now one thing you'll notice about this figure is first of all, I think this is a, is this a Spanish packaging? I'm not entirely sure, but this figure is pretty much the Elite 101 Cody Rhodes, but another thing you're going to notice is not only is it the Elite 101 Cody Rhodes attire, but it looks like it has the new Ultimate Edition Cody Rhodes weight belt. So the, we do have that new weight belt mold in there, which honestly is not the best weight belt. I think that it's not that much of an upgrade, if it is, even is an upgrade. I don't like the new weight belt. I think that it's, I guess it is better than the original. I will say it definitely is better. So I don't want to say it's not better. It's definitely better than it was, but it's still just not what we want out of a weight belt. I think that there's so much more that they could do here with this. So yeah, I think they need to go back to the drawing board on the weight belt. I like the way that AEW and Jazzwares does their weight belts. I think they're perfect. And then even Jax back in the day made some really good molded weight belts. Even if the mold's not the exact same, I still think that it would look a lot better, man. I think that Jazzwares had it down pat for the most part for a modern Cody Rhodes weight belt. It could even be increased in thickness, I think. But the Elite 101 Cody, while it's a great figure, it's definitely not that exciting in terms of this. I think that repaint... I just just don't I don't know how hard it is to repaint these figures why release the exact same figure you know that Mattel is on a stretch of them releasing the same figures over and over but I will say I don't think that this had to be this way I think they could have easily done a repaint or a different attire but here we are man we are getting elite 101 Cody again in the top picks wave not the most exciting like I stated I just think there's so many gears that Cody's worn and I think that they, they would sit it's probably gonna sell anyway okay I know that it's probably gonna sell anyway it's just a, a fact of the matter is I think they could barely change a gear and it still would have sold really really well and I, I don't know what goes all into that, obviously, but Elite 101 Cody is still a really good Cody. It's just I would have liked to seen a new gear here for this figure. I think that would have thrown it over the top. But essentially, this is back-to-back re-releases right now in this top picks wave, which you guys know they usually do a couple re-releases in the way, but then they'll give us one brand new repaint, which we'll get into, man. But let's get into the last figure in the set for this top picks wave. And the last figure in this wave is going to be The Rock. Now, what's sickening about this Rock figure is it is no different than the... WrestleMania figure. So they're redoing this and this was in the display case if I'm not mistaken at WrestleMania like I stated. I want to say I do remember it being in the 
case. If it wasn't, then I'm just having some crazy Mandela effect or something like that. I don't know, but it is the WrestleMania figure, and I think that another way they could have made this figure sell like hotcakes, you know, this this is a really good rock figure. I actually like this rock figure a lot. It's just they could have easily repainted the tights or repainted the arm tattoo. What if they just added the updated tattoo to this? How many of these figures would have sold if they added the updated tattoo to this? Because we only have two modern tattoo or new tattoo rock figures from Mattel in the Elite line. Zero in the Ultimate line, two in the Elite line, and both of them are single jointed. So how nice would it have been if they put it here? It would be a double jointed updated rock tattoo. People would have bought this so fast. They would have bought it so fast and it's just another re-release, -re man. I mean, definitely a very, very trash top picks wave in my opinion. You have a lot of talent here. I think it's names that people want. Solo, yeah, I, th I would say that Solo could fit in the top picks wave. I think he's cooled off a little bit. I don't think he's as sought after as he as he once was in the past. However, I think that, you know, The Rock and Cody Rhodes can sell like hotcakes. Solo Sokoa, I'm fine with it. I just think, and I don't really even have a, a bad, it doesn't really even upset me that much that the Elite 104 with the upgraded torso from Elite 107 is in the line. I think that's a okay top pick. Like, I can actually understand it. And the selections of Rock and Cody Rhodes make the most sense, but I think that if they could have just repainted them in some stretch, just repaint them somehow, some way, change the gear, add the tattoo to the Rock, hell, even take the Elite 109 Cody and repaint the suit. That even would have been fine, I think, for a top picks wave. So it's a very, it's just a very bland and very boring top picks wave. Definitely up there for one of the worst top picks waves that Mattel's ever done. It's pretty disappointing. But yeah, I was pretty bummed about this wave, man. I want to know what you guys think. Do you think it's bummerific? Do you think it's all right? I'd like to know all those things, man. But let's move on. This top picks wave left a sour taste in my mouth. Hopefully... We will get better, man. But we do have some mid-on-card shots of Unrivaled 15, which we're going to dive into, man. Let's start off first. We do have Soraya here. And this figure looks better than it did in the render shots, I will say. I don't think it looks as bad as it did. I don't hate this figure. I think that it looks okay. I think they got the skin tone right for the most part. I don't think it necessarily looks exactly like Soraya, but I don't, like, despise it. I also think if you possibly could get... I remember, wasn't there, like, some rare elite or, like, figure that ended up being hard to obtain? I think if you maybe did a head swap with it, it would really turn out great because AEW's women's figures are actually really, really good. So maybe that'd be something that you could do here. But it looks like she has her sternum tattoo in there. I like the gear. I like the jacket, even though it is rubber. I wish it wasn't rubber, but it's not a bad figure. Not a bad figure here. I don't know. You can let me know if you're going to be grabbing this one. I feel like it's the first page slash Soraya figure in a very long time. I don't think we've ever seen AEW have a Soraya figure. So we are looking at potentially Paige's first figure in a very long time here, here in Unrivaled 15. We also have a look at the Devil MJF. I like this figure a lot. Now, his hand is backwards, I think, in the packaging, or maybe it's not. It just looks like it is. No, it's not. It just looks weird because he's, you know, he's like pointing the one outward there. At first, I thought that was a middle finger, but this looks pretty good. I do like, I know it's kind of plain Jane, like blacked out from head to toe or whatever, but you may be able to make some cool promo gears out of this. You do have the poker chip with the hook. You have the mask in there. I actually like this figure, but I like obscure things like this, so I do understand why people wouldn't want this, but I do like that it does have the devil on the packaging as well. I like that it has the moniker on there and everything like like that. I think this is a pretty cool release. I'm actually intrigued with this and excited to get this figure in the collection because I, I like it. And even, I think even adding like a black wash to the mask may actually make it look more realistic. If you notice on the side of the packaging, you'll see the mask. It looks a bit flat on the figure. I bet if you add a little wash to it, it'd really bring it to life. But I'm actually, I may be one, one of the only ones, but I'm looking forward to this MJF devil figure a whole lot. So we'll see how it comes when it finally gets here. But that is the devil MJF figure. We also have some old Joe. Now his first Target exclusive red shorts figure was pretty good. I thought it was pretty good for the most part. I enjoyed it. I didn't like the knee pads. It does look like this is essentially the Elite 56 Samoa Joe in AEW Unrivaled form. And it's a repaint of the Target exclusive. I like the white outsoles on the shoes, but this is Uncle Tim AEW Unrivaled Series 15 Samoa Joe. This looks pretty good there. And then we also have the Lionheart Chris Jericho, which I like. I like that we have a change in direction right here. A little bit of a different take. I know the head sculpt's not the best. I'm not a big fan of this head sculpt either, but you may be able to make a throwback Jericho too if you were to do a torso swap or something with a different figure. You may be able to make an actual throwback Chris Jericho out of this depending on what head sculpts you use. Maybe you could use a Mattel head sculpt. Maybe there's some jazz. I'm not thinking off the top of the dome, but there could be 
a potential head swap here or something you could do with this Lionheart Chris Jericho. I like the gear regardless, and at least it is a different take on Jericho. It's not the same, you know, like, you know, the tight fitted pants look with the shorter combat style boots. It is a little bit of a different take. So at least we got something new there. It's kind of a fresh line in terms of talents. I don't think that, you know, it's not a lot of the exact same things going on. And speaking of which, we do have Daniel Garcia, who probably has the best looking figure in the entire set. If you look at the head sculpt, I think the head sculpt looks really good. I'm digging this figure. I like the attire. I like the blue colors. I like the black towel, which is a different take. I like this Daniel Garcia. I, I like this. This is a good take here. Looks like it's going to be able to pose around with the best of them as well, so this should be a fun one, but we do have our Daniel Garcia figure. Now, all of these are men on card, and I can't remember the little store, but apparently some store that I don't think is like a ringside collectibles or anything like this. I think it's some sort of other wrestling figure retailer or a different retail store. I'm not entirely sure what store it was, but they got all of these in stock, so I'd imagine ringside collectibles will probably have these very soon in stock. If you guys are interested in Unripe 15, make sure you go pre-order those. But then we have the last figure in the set, which is going to be Ethan Page, who recently showed up in WWE. So this will be his last and first, or first and last AEW action figure, and it looks pretty good here. I don't hate it. I'm still not a big fan of the smirking head sculpt. I feel like, you know, we did see images of it. It looked like the neck was too tall, but I don't think we can, you know, it's weird because you can look at these images and you can make your judgments, but it's really hard to say until you actually see really good professional shots or you see these things in hand. That is your best opportunity to see these figures. So, you know, when we get into the reviews or we get into these different things, that is the best time to actually see these figures is you can actually see a live video of them up close and personal so you can make your own decisions on these figures. But Ethan Page looks solid here. Still hate the rubber jacket and everything but we do have a look at the chase variants as well and the ethan page is the first chase that we have the one of three thousand rare and the regular edition i think is better but this one's not bad you have the black and gold kind of plain jane especially the rubber jacket but it is the black and gold ethan page so we get two ethan pages in one which is nice i'll definitely be trying to track down both of these i am a big fan of his youtube channel and enjoying his toy hunts and stuff like that so i, I like the guy a lot so we will be trying to track down this ethan page and then we do have the chase variant devil mjf which looks very weird it it looks to be the same body and everything, and the loose mask hand is very sick, but this head sculpt just looks weird, but again, it's it's a very, it's a blurry photo, it's hard to tell exactly what it looks like, but it doesn't look like MJF from this stance, I remember being excited thinking that this may be the best MJF head sculpt, but from this angle, it doesn't look like that anymore, so I guess we'll have to see about that, but it is the 1 of 5,000 Chase Edition, we have the Devil MJF, and it is very similar to the regular edition, but it is a little different, you get the mask in hand, hand sculpt that you can interchange, and you do have have the MJF head sculpt on there. So a little bit different take. Hopefully the MJF head sculpt does not look as bad as it does here. But again, very hard to tell. And we'll have to wait until we get it in hand again or get some better images of this figure. But And then the last thing I want to touch on today, man, is going to be the Ring of Honor AEW Jazzwares Vault exclusive 1 of 4,000 Future Shock Adam Cole and Kyle O'Reilly unrivaled 2-pack right here. And we have a lot of stuff going on here. I do love the Ring of Honor line in terms of what it represents and, you know, these throwback moments of all these current superstars. But I don't know, man. These these figures from, I, I don't know, like the Adam Cole, I just don't like the formula they use for Adam Cole. I think that his torso is too big. I just think he's too big in general. I think he's too wide. I think that the torso isn't good. I don't like this torso they use for people, but I don't know. The, the bodies just are, are normal. I do like the gears. I like the attire choices here. This actually is a good attire that they chose here. But Kyle O'Reilly, the head sculpt looks nothing like Kyle O'Reilly to me. The head sculpt for Adam Cole does look like Adam Cole, especially from this time period. I just don't like the body choices here. I would like to see a new body of some kind from, you know, AEW and Jazzwares. I think that they could do a lot better here. But at the same time, I do like the Ring of Honor figures. Like I said, the 1 of 4,000, you know, you can stack up on those. And they look, they, they're just awesome. I would love to see a big Ring of Honor display from somebody. And I think that the these figures are cool. It's just, I think there's different executions here that can make these a lot better. But we do have the Future Shock 1 of 4,000 Jazzwares Vault exclusive, Adam Cole and Kyle O'Reilly. And this will be our second Kyle O'Reilly. And I think this will be, what, our third or fourth Adam Cole now that we are getting from Jazz Wares. And I think the first time we saw these was back at Comic-Con, right? Wasn't it San Diego Comic-Con last year that they put these up on the presentation or the Jazz Wares presentation? I could be wrong about that. Maybe it was at a event of some kind, but I do know that, you know, Comic-Con's coming up and I'm sure AEW and Jazz Wares will have more stuff to show us, which I'm excited about. And I'm excited about what the Comic-Con exclusive is going to be for AEW and Jazz Wares. That should be also be fun. But nonetheless, man, that is all of the news that we have today, man. I'd like to know what you guys think of the Ring of Honor, Cole and O'Reilly. I'd also like to know what you think of this these top picks figures what do you think of the new ew and rival 15 let me know all of those things down in the comment section below man 
Mm-hmm. I just, dude, that top picks wave, again, one of the worst top picks waves I've seen. I think they could have upgraded them in so many different ways, but it is what it is, man. We'll have to wait and see on those, I guess. But nonetheless, I think that's pretty much going to wrap up today's news video. I'd love to know what your guys' thoughts are on all of this news down below. Again, the news is hot because we're closer and closer to Comic-Con, and I'm sure it's only going to heat up from here. We're going to learn more things coming. We're going to know more exclusives. We're going to know more and more information as we approach Comic-Con. That's usually how it is, man. But we will be here to cover everything as it is announced, as you guys know. So come back for it and turn on your bell. Subscribe to the channel. Please leave a like on the video. I greatly appreciate it. It'd be cool if we could get this video to a thousand likes. I greatly appreciate that, man. Thank you guys so very much for watching. Huge shout out to our Patreon members. Huge shout out to those fellows over there, man. Thank you guys so very much for your continued support. As always, you guys are absolutely incredible, and I appreciate every single one of those guys over there. But I am getting out of here, man. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at MyDamnToys. I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a blessed one, and I'll catch you guys later.